Now I'm going out on a bright and frosty morning to have a look around. It's very beautiful, lovely light. But it was about minus two or three last night, I think. Although there's no ice on the pond, I see. But it's looking so nice, I must get out. So here we go. <coughs> Hello horse, how are you? Looking gorgeous as always. Such a female head that, I'm sure it's an Arab. <laughs> the, um, the Daphne's been wonderful this year, but it's just about finished. I mean, there's still lots of blossom there, but it's all going. <coughs> and the garden's looking quite tidy. The only thing is the grass is a bit sad because the people who come and do the grass four times a year and put down fertilizer and things haven't come. And I don't know why they haven't, because it would be perfectly simple for them to still do their job and stay outside and not see anybody, as they, they don't normally see me when they come round anyway. So I'm going to have to find some fertiliser and do it myself, because it needs it. Anyway, round we go. Round the box walk. The box is looking okay. One or two box have been a little bit nibbled by something um, but I'm not too worried about it I think by the summer they'll be they'll be fine again I've given them the spray that I use here we are the table with bits of the statue still on it I've stuck some the statue fell over <coughs> in fact I knocked it over when I was pruning the wisteria and uh, there are still bits left there. I've stuck the main part together again, but I haven't stuck this bit, bit. So there are limbs lying around on this table. There we are. Lovely light on the old wall. I've been asking people what I should plant in the gap just to the right of the bench there. And I've had several nice suggestions, but I haven't quite decided what to do. I took out an old may bush that was past its sell by date. Um, and so there's a, quite a space there now. Might be, a, might be a magnolia, but I'll see. I'm not sure about magnolias. I'm not sure that I want too many of those big green leaves in the summer. And I'm not particularly happy with the way that they flower on bare branches and the in the early part of the year. Anyway, I'll, I'll see. Um, the yew tree behind has been trimmed back nicely by Bruce, who looks after the Boney's garden behind. And so there's more light in that part of the garden now. It used to overhang the wall. And he's, he's cut back there and fig tree as well. All these little changes make quite a difference to what grows underneath. So it'll be rather nice to see. It's a bit dark here at the moment, but the lovely quince is coming out. That beautiful grey green leaf, mostly green now, but it starts off grey, is looking lovely. I'm not going to walk on the grass because um, it's not good for it when it's got frost on it. Now this huge thing here is 500 litres of manure. Um, I was busy putting... Um, the usual compost that I get from the garden centre on my beds, on the two beds here, and I've wanted some more. Do you see the beds have got lovely dark compost on now? This side and this side. And they look very tidy. But I've got two more beds to do. And, but unfortunately the, the garden centre closed, so I can't get any more of it and all the garden centres have been closed. I suppose they've been deemed non-essential, which is actually going to cause a terrific problem for all the growers of plants, because they're going to have plants completely wasted because people can't get them. I suppose there's a certain amount of mail order that will go on, but not nearly the amount of selling that they normally do at this time of year. Anyway, um, so instead of getting the the horse manure compost. I've got this enormous bag which was delivered a couple of days ago 
um, and that can go on the beds as well. It's, uh, it's actually a manure rather than a compost, but it'll do the same job. And so I'm rather pleased with that. Anyway, look at that. Isn't that beautiful now? The hazel's just beginning to show a little bit of life. Not much, but one or two twigs have got something going on. Whereas the fruit trees and things are, going to look, are looking beautiful. They've got a lot of blossom on them, but I'm terribly worried about all the frost we've had in the last three or four nights. See the pigeons flapping away. This is Lucy's tree, the Mirabelle, which is going to be the largest tree in the garden when it gets going. Um, and I don't know whether the frost has got its blossom or not. I don't know enough about blossom and frost to tell. But you can see all the blossom on the other fruit trees looking wonderful. The damson, the biggest one, didn't have any fruit at all last year because of frost. But the blossom is sitting there and let's hope it's not been damaged. I can't tell if it has or not. Behind it is Nick's tree. Nick Duke's tree looking very blossomy. And in the back, right in the corner there, there's an old Victoria plum, which looks fine as well. So I'm hoping, hoping it's all going to be better this year. And the summer house is quite tidy. I've been sitting there most days. In fact, practically every day, every, almost all the days for the last 10 days have been, had some sun and I managed to come down in here and have tea. When it's particularly cold and blowy, I managed to sit inside with the doors open. But otherwise, I've been outside and it's been lovely and warm because the winds have all come from the north, so, so I'm sheltered by that huge hedge. Very lucky. Anyway, the grasses are looking fine. I won't get a very good view of them because I don't want to stand on the grass, but <clears throat> they've been beautifully cut down and they're all ready to shoot up again. In fact, they're looking very good. You know, they're, the green is showing right through. The Euphorbia mercenites that I love so much is looking very smart. All the yellows are coming through again. Such an extraordinary plant, isn't it? And its cousins, the, um, the Euphorbia wolfenii too, are looking wonderful, as they always do. And as I look at it now, on the far wall, you can see the roses coming out. The leaf on the rose has suddenly shot up. And you can see the borrowed landscape as well, all the way down to the Scots pine and the chestnut and all of that mass of willow and the stuff. There are lots and lots of tributaries of the test where I'm looking now over the wall. And of course it keeps it wonderfully damp. But I am very pleased to see these roses. They're looking so good. I'm just going to have a closer look. Before we get there, there's the Christmas rose, of course. There's the, um, um, heavens, what are they called? Apart from Christmas roses. I know exactly what they're called, but I forget. There's a bamboo coming up just behind the summer house now. And I'm waiting, well, it only went in last year. It's going to froth right over the top of the summer house. It'll look absolutely wonderful in two or three years' time. It's going to be a great big towering bamboo. It's black bamboo. And I put another one in over here as well, just next to the, uh, the wildflower meadow, <laughs> the wildflower patch. And that's doing very well. And the hebe that I cut back, so viciously last year is coming out again beautifully. It's all full of leaf and so that's such good news. So it's all looking good and Bruce is being very good next door by cutting back some of the bony's taller stuff so I get more light in the garden. But look at the rose, it's been beautifully trained by catcher on the wall. It's all been laid carefully and pinned and tied up and suddenly all this sun is bringing out the leaf and the leaf's looking terrific so I think I'm going to get a wonderful display of roses this year. 
The tucrium is looking fantastic. In fact, it's got one or two blue flowers on it already, which is rather wonderful. It's an amazing plant. You don't see, see many of them in gardens, but it's grey green, which I love. And uh, just sort of makes a bigger and bigger mound. <laughs> I think perhaps if I'd named what, what it was going to be like, I would have put it somewhere slightly different, but that's life. That's gardening. And as you go around, you can have a look at the rest of the grasses. The pheasant grass, I absolutely love pheasant grass most spectacular stuff. It's got lovely colours at all times of the year. Um, all through the winter it's sort of golden and then um, it never really has a bad patch. I've got a few bits of dead stuff to cut out of it um, and will do. Oh hang on, I haven't been showing you the pheasant grass, I've been showing you something else. Um, but you can see it again now. But there are two pheasant grasses next door to it. This is the big one here. But then there are two which I planted later because I lost two. And those aren't nearly as satisfactory. But I see actually that there is quite a lot of colour in them. So I'm, all I'm going to have to do is go through and cut out the dead fronds. And it could actually look quite nice. Look at the light and colour in that one. I'm very pleased about that because I've actually been looking online to see if I could buy a couple of new ones, but I don't think I'm going to have to, which is very good news. Good. Anyway, the um, steepy gigantia is looking wonderful, and the biggest one of all is this little patch here, which is uh, called Richard Hansen. That's the one that gets to about nine or ten feet tall by the end of the year. Cut right back, of course, like all of them. Anyway, there we are. Lovely. Going up past some rather leggy Wolfenii. I've changed a lot of the Wolfenii and taken away the leggiest ones, but I think I think I should have taken away this one as well. But um, I didn't, and so um, it'll have to go later in the year. When it gets its Chelsea chop, <laughs> it'll, um, some of the, the young shoots will still be viable, but I think by next year I'm going to have to replace that one. I'm very pleased to see the wisteria, which I cut back ruthlessly this year, has now got some buds on it because I was afraid I'd almost killed it, but it's looking much better. There we are. The artichoke's looking good. That comes back every year and is massive, as you know. And you get another view of the grass garden from this side. And into the orchard. There we are. Still in darkness, the orchard almost to it. And down the end I must put out, well soon put out, some of the garden furniture uh, and the umbrellas and things like that, but it's a bit early yet. I don't really do that till May. It's only the 1st of April today. And then there's the hazel looking from this side and the grass. I've already talked about the grass and the beds. You see that bed's got a beautiful black mulch on it. And it's the, this bed that really needs, and the one on the other side over here, these both need the compost mulch that I've, um, that I've got in that big bag. So that'll have to be spread. But that's all right. There we are. Looking all around. Birds flapping around in the distance. And you can tell how quiet it is. It's not usually noisy in the garden anyway, but there are so many fewer cars now, I'm very pleased to say, that um, most of the time it's pretty quiet. And I think the birds are reclaiming their space, really, because I see lots more of them, I'm sure. 
There they are, dashing around. Lots of pigeons, of course, and I suspect those two are mating. <laughs> and there's another one. There's usually a third pigeon <laughs> trying to get... <laughs> there's usually a lady pigeon followed by two men, which is really rather unpleasant, but mm -hmm. that's how it works in the pigeon world. And the bottom of the hazel, there are two or three long branches now, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to spike them just as I spiked that one because it had so many pigeon droppings beneath it. And now they're congregating on this long one that I'm looking at now. And I'm going to have to protect the ground beneath from piles of pigeon droppings by putting spikes on that. People find that rather cruel, I don't know why, since there are probably a hundred million branches within 500 yards of this hazel, so they can go somewhere else. Oh yes, I must look up the top of the house because I can hear something trying to nest in the um, chimney in the drawing room, well in the sitting room, and I think they've been dropping sticks down it which is rather bad news. And before they lay eggs and have a nest, I think I must light a fire and drive it away, because otherwise, when I do light a fire, we're going to have cooked birds, which would be awful. So I must get on with that and do it quickly. Anyway, it's so lovely that I'll leave it there and um, just be quiet for a moment. Yeah, the cooing of the pigeons and the twitter of the birds. Wonderful. Okay.